Good Friday morning and welcome to Mornings with Luann and Tim on On TV. I'm Tim and that's Luann. I am so. How are All you, day, Lulu? Every day. I'm good. How I'm are you? Well. I'm well. I'm glad that it's Friday. Are you? I'm ready for the weekend. Yeah, because you have like so one. much downtime this weekend. I have three shows busy. this weekend. I know. You're one busier tonight, than One a... tomorrow, one Sunday. It's that time of the year. Christmas, people want entertainment yes. for their parties. So there yeah. I am. That's awesome, though. Yeah, what are you going to do? I love it. I'm going to get drunk and decorate my house. <gasps> I'm doing that today. As soon as I've done work, I'm going home, I'm washing my face, I'm going home, getting right in my bed, having a nice nap. I'm gonna wake up whenever I wanna wake up. Mm -hmm. If it's 8 p.m., I don't care, because yeah. it's Friday. And then, I'm gonna have a couple of vodkas and do the tree and do the house. Snowman will be upside down, they'll be in the driveway, but it'll be done. I'm feeling a little pressure. I'm only got like two weeks left, well, so I'm, I'm freaking out a little bit. Wellness Wednesday was just two days ago, and yet she's using alcohol to cope. I don't know. You know, seriously, whatever have, works for you. I think we need to have an intervention. Mama needs some vodka. Just saying. An intervention. <laughs> um, we need a Christmas intervention. And then I'm going to a show across the river on Saturday. You didn't tell me that. Medieval dinner. Where, you know, Who where are you, you going with? with your, my friend Mary Lou. I have a friend, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. There's dress, a whole gang of us. Are you going to dress in medieval clothing? In other words, what you normally wear? <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing this. <laughs> same shock. thing. Yeah. <laughs> ah, and that's fun. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Is there jousting? Don't know. Do they have horses? <gasps> it's inside. In Toronto, they have a big thing, and it's jousting yes. and everything inside. Yes, I've been to that one. Is that like going to be But like there's not horses inside. In Toronto? Yeah. They don't have that? No. They didn't want There uh, is? There, there's the downtown one where there's horses. You went to the cheap one. <laughs> I guess I did. Yeah. I was going to say horses on the, the first interview this morning. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, oh, what the heck was his name? Anyway, he was from the downtown. <laughs> downtown. It's a recorded interview. You'll find out. I forgot what his name Remember him? No. <laughs> He's from <laughs> Sioux St. Ray, Michigan. He was really, really nice. His last name was Nep. K-N-E-P-P. -P. Justin. Justin! Oh, I'm so sorry, Justin. He's probably watching the show going, I didn't know his name when he, when he arrived either, so don't feel bad. I still don't know it. Anyway, Justin Nett. Very nice. He's a super nice guy, and he's like he's like their version of, um, now I'm stuck, who's our downtown association guy? Josh Ingram. He's like the... You're your, awesome with names. It's Friday. My brain is fried. Your brain is fried on Monday. <laughs> who's on the show, Tim? Hamina, 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 hamina. <laughs> anyway, the American version of Josh Ingram, his name is Justin Nepp, and he's really nice, and he came in all the way over here for an oh, interview. Nice, huh? Because it's there, they're doing an op downtown open house mm. Christmas in Sioux, Michigan, and they got a horse-drawn carriage to take you up and down their main street. Come on! Isn't that the best? That is so awesome. I hope it's like those fat flurries that are just like slowly falling. Oh, you want you want you hope it snows. I thought yeah. is there a kind of a horse called a fat flurry? I didn't yeah. know. There's a horse well, it depends on which angle you're flurry. looking at. <laughs> yeah. So decorating for Christmas, do you use real or fake tree? Fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is your feeling about the environmentally friendliness of your fake tree? If you, you think it's better? It, if you use it for 25 years instead of cutting down Did a live tree. Did you do research? Because that's so exactly that you, what this thing says. You use it for 25 years. It's it's like, you know, you, instead of cutting down a fully grown, Did you look beautiful up? tree. No, that's why I got a fake one. Also, with a real one, the needles fall. You're vacuuming in July and there's still needles popping out of the rug. Drives me out of my mind. Fire hazard? Mm. Real ones are there's a fire that, hazard. Yes, you're fake right. ones are not. Yeah. So much. They're designed not they to burn. They don't smell the same, though. They don't look the same as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there's some really, there are some ones that look close, but you, I can always tell pretty much. No? Mm -hmm. from a dis maybe not from a distance. But anyway, um, I have also an artificial tree. Mm -hmm. But um, the, you, you phrased the exact point. They said for at least eight years, mm. preferably 20. Because then uh, the, the greenhouse emissions that are caused by making mm -hmm. that tree are kind of spread out over time. So it's if you were to burn a tree or whatever, like a, a real tree and the greenhouse gas emissions from cutting down a real tree, I don't understand the science of it all, but they're saying basically it kind of balances out as long as you maintain that fake tree for eight to 25 years. So good Done. for you. Done. Well, actually I have my old, old tree from when my children were this big. 
Yeah. Um, and Jim decorates it and puts it on our deck outside. So the That's snow falls nice. on it and he lights it and everything. It's beautiful. Yeah, so we use those puppies. You really do. Don't that talk to decorate. me about recycling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, CNN. Boom. Oh. oh, maybe that was not the right thing to do right there. Bomb threats last night. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> and she said boom. I said boom, yeah. I meant like drop the mic, boom. Like, wow, she meant wow. Yes, I meant wow. Yeah. Don Lemon live and there goes the fire alarms and then what's what cnn is notorious for uh -huh, drama now they're outside and now they don't know a darn thing and don lemon's out there with a pundit talking about room. nothing in particular yep we're outside it's cold yep yeah the, they're in there right now the building is empty because it's been evacuated yeah those calls yeah, yeah, so and it's then cold. Got, then he's got this pundit with him who's annoying at the best of times indoors in the warmth. Outside, his voice has gone up like an octave. <laughs> it's, like, it's really cold out here, and, and, and there's a bomb, and there's a bomb, and, and, and we're on the street, it's cold, and oh. Like, oh my God. I was, you know what? Not to make fun of the fact that they had a bomb scare. Because no. seriously, obviously, as you may recall, but let's they just facts. had one. You know, as they mentioned in the broadcast, because I was watching it live mm. and it did get pretty tedious. And I mean, you, I was watching, going, okay, ho I really do hope that nothing explodes. And they had to Certainly. evacuate the whole area. Right. I mean, people got like put out. Like neighborhoods and stuff, yeah. And that's what they were, they were going on about that. You know, it's not just us out here in the cold. There's all kinds of people all going down the street and they're all cold because of the bomb threat. You just. Mm. So, anyway, you're sitting there watching and he says, you know, our head offices are in Atlanta. And I'm thinking, so why don't you just throw to Atlanta? Like, why? Get in the car. So, and I mean, once in a while, come back up and say, it's still cold, but... Uh, you know what? And the thing is, is I drama. get that. As a journalist, I get it. Mm. But you need to report on things that are developing. If they're not developing, <laughs> then perhaps you would go to a commercial break. Then perhaps you might go to Atlanta, the head office. Go to a cartoon. And then have them come back to you every five minutes or so. There. When there's nothing to talk about, it's very difficult, as you can tell, if <laughs> to make sense of anything. We, right? I was like, watching think thinking, about it. You know you're out there and you're talking and you're babbling and you're like, I, I, I can't tell you what's going on because I don't know what's going on. Right? You, you, want, you could host on CNN right now with the babbling you're doing. <laughs> okay, we got some news. What? Kevin Hart, I just announced on Tuesday, Wednesday's show that Kevin Hart was chosen to host the Academy Awards. Well, it's Friday and he's out. He quit. Yeah, he, he quit. Was, he stepped down. He, in the past, has said some, not just in his comedy routines, in his life, he said some very, very anti-gay, anti-LGBTQ things. Posted them on social media. Like this one. Yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse i'm going to break it over his head and say stop that's gay or in his 2010 special when he said one of my biggest fears is my son growing up and being gay uh keep in mind i'm not homophobic uh-huh but if i can prevent my son from being gay i will I wonder if he's I figured out since prevent. then you can't prevent your son from being gay. Anyway. You can vaccinate against gaydom, can't you? <laughs> if only I'd gotten that shot, maybe I'd... See? Maybe your mother be, was just too much of a purist. Maybe we'd be married, Luann. Anyway, so GLAD, that's the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. They just go by GLAD now because over the years they're like, oh, Gay and Lesbian Alliance doesn't cover everybody, so now they just call themselves GLAD. Anyway... All they, they contacted ABC, they contacted the Academy, they contacted Hearts Management, and they just wanted to discuss like his stance. And in, before even discussions happened, he came out and said, okay, you know what, if you can't forgive what I said all those years ago, um, eight, and realize that now I'm a 40-year-old man and I've come to a place in my life where I'm happy and content with myself, I guess his son's not gay, so he's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you can't if you can't get over that then you know what I'm not going to distract from the awards and I'm going to step down I'm in a good place too bad you all aren't it's like but no apology no right so you know what and then from his bed he's lying there shirtless going and I just, with I'm his, in such a good spot right with now his big big chains on and I just don't and, have time and you know what drama. if you want to be discriminatory he's two and a half feet tall you know what would be so the there 
You know, be the best part. The best part would be if that daughter who had the dollhouse turns out to be a lesbian. That would teach him. <laughs> Again, vaccination. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, do you know who Gabrielle Union is? No, did they name Union Station after her? No. Okay, then who um, is she? Beautiful, beautiful um, mm. actress. Mm. And she just recently, by surrogate, had a child. She's Ooh. 47 years old, 46 wow. years old. She wanted a baby so badly, she had eight miscarriages. Oh, is that her? Isn't she stunning? She, she had eight miscarriages, the poor hun. Oh, Aww. she just wanted to have the babies. Did it work? So she had babies and she posted on Instagram, her with her little baby. It worked. And they're placing their, and, and they're playing the um, kissing game. Cause you know how babies are always, that's what they do. Uh, and it looks so like you when you she, do your deer call. Yeah. So she was kissing the little baby on the lips. Oh. To, so the little baby was cooing and stuff. So they were playing the kissing game. Yeah. Well, the comments. What happened? That's unsanitary and you're giving your baby germs and what's wrong with you? The baby's too young to be kissing on the mouth. But don't, doesn't that help build up a child's <clears throat> immune system? <clears throat> I mean, kissing on the mouth. Come on. To a certain extent, she, They though. were touching little lips, and she and the baby was... <laughs> like, seriously. It was a little a, kissing game. A deer just came in. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to play a kissing game with you. <laughs> Who's on the show, oh, Tim? Dear. We have no time left, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? We, we've got a countdown? Yeah. Yeah. Well, where was our countdown, Michael? He's in there. I don't know. He's having computer issues today. Anyway, or oh, Garrett can't hear. <laughs> Garrett can't hear. Yeah. This was a fun segment anyway. Yeah. Who's on the show? So we know that that guy named Justin Knapp is on the show. That guy. We've established that from the Downtown Association. It was a taped interview, but regardless, watch and find out what's going on across the river in our Twin City. And then, uh, oh, Penny from Heaven. Used to, be, used to be pennies from heaven. Yes. Saint Mary's College. I mean, they raised so much Tons. money. But now, since there's no more pennies, there's a new spin on it. So uh, the vice principal of Saint Mary's College and the student are here to talk about their fundraising efforts. And then, of course, it's Fur and Feathers Feline Friday. So the Humane Society will be here to wrap things up. All that plus the news on mornings with Luann and Tim. Don't go away. Okay, Merry Christmas, everybody. We're getting ready here in Sioux, Ontario, and in Sioux, Michigan. This is Justin Nepper. I never met you before. Uh, thanks, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming over to hang out with <laughs> us on you. this it's side. Thank you. awesome. Thanks for having me. I saw, I was going through the Facebook events, as I do, looking for the stuff to talk about on the show, and I came across this great... You're having an open Christmas open house downtown. Absolutely, we are, yeah. It's and it's... So you and I are recording this right now. This is going to air on Friday. And the open house is on Saturday? Yes, December, December 8th. December, December the 8th. 8th, okay. So what can we expect if we drive across the bridge? Absolutely. What's going to happen? We, we have, uh, so one of the things we're, I think that makes us the un unique as uh, sister cities, as they say, yeah. we have two downtowns within five minutes of each other, pretty Spitting much. Spitting distance, right yes, across exactly. the bridge. Yeah. So we have yeah. about uh, 40, right now we have about 40 retail shops in our downtown, 20 restaurants, uh, and 10, uh, what I say, you know, uh, world-class attractions, museums, you know, the Tower of History, all those things. Right. So in the winter, we really try to celebrate our, our, our retail shops and our restaurants, especially around Christmas. We want people to go out shopping. So uh, this has been going on, I think, for probably 50 years. Uh, no ever kidding? since going back, you know, to when J.C. Penney was downtown and when <laughs> all the old department stores were downtown. Um, I don't know if they had the same ones on, on the Canadian side, but a lot of people that grew up in the area, Kresge's, Scott's, uh, Woolworth, those types right, of places. Right, yeah. So the Christmas open house uh, is really all about, it started all about just going store to store, you know, getting hot cider, getting, you know, cookies, uh, mm -hmm. hot, you know, chocolate, things like that. Right. Uh, so this Saturday we have horse-drawn carriage rides, that, which is okay. amazing. That blows me away. Uh, we don't have anything like that over here. We'd have to, well, not downtown. You could go for a horse-drawn carriage ride, but like at Farmer Bob's, whatever, yeah. that's what not, but you guys are doing it right. We're, 
we, downtown. We're doing it right downtown, and we let cars drive right with the horse drawn. It's it's crazy. All right, we had to search high and low to find. You were, we were talking yeah, beforehand. People, you kind of got an ultimatum, right? People were like, "We want yeah. horse drawn carriage." We're really, you know, we're really close to Mackinac Island, so everybody says we gotta have horses. That's that's but all. They over put the theirs place. all away for the winter. They, yes, they do. And so we found there's a old uh, a retired couple actually uh, Powers Horse Powers Farms out of I think they're south of Pickford. Okay. And they have they retired. From I think Arizona or somewhere moved up. Come on, and they have um, they have like wedding carriages. They have these big wagons, so they come up. Their horses are really good, so they'll, they'll they take you from stop to stop. Actually, yeah. in this little brochure. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can actually park your car on Saturday. It goes from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. Oh, and each man. block, you can hop out, go shopping, come back. God, that's hop on a carriage. so great. So that's that's one thing, that's and then huge. we have, uh, of course, Santa Claus uh, downtown in Avery Square. There'll be photos with Santa Claus. So we usually get a lineup of tons of kids from all over the area. So, so bring your fun. kids over for that. Really neat. Uh, if you like model trains, our historical society yes. downtown, they have a model train display that they've been growing for the last five years. It's probably as big as this room. Actually, twice as big as this room. That's pretty with, big, Justin. With, yes, it is. It has uh, <laughs> Sue, the, the train, uh, Sue, Sue Line, or the, the old train yeah. um, from our, con you know, from Canada. Yeah. That's all set up. So that happens. And then, of course, just great shopping deals all over River the River of History Museum tours? R museums open, yep. And if you haven't been to the, you guys have a couple museums here in the city. We have the Bush Plain, and then we have our yes. downtown museum about the history of yeah. St. Marino Goma, yeah. And people people love the Bush Plain Museum. Both of your museums are talked about a lot. The River of History Museum, I would say, is a, a best-kept secret. It's yeah. something that people really need to go to. It's right, right downtown. Um, our uh, uh, Chippewa tribe... Uh, administrative headquarters is downtown, and they actually lease a portion of their building to the River History Museum. So, you go you, if you walked by it in the building, you would you wouldn't think it was anything besides maybe you know <laughs> a little a little hole in the wall. Yeah. But there's these double doors, and then it goes into this huge museum and, and walks around. So, really cool place. Uh, that's on that's Avery Square. No, sorry, that's it's really focused place. on the St. Mary's River. That's on Ashman. Yes, yeah, front of Ashman. Yep, on Ashman. Yep. So it looks like everything's really getting going at 11 a.m. Right, that's when yeah. everything starts. I think I think Santa will come in at ten. Okay. So, and because he's good, doing lots of kids there, so that's yes. better. He's got an earlier yeah. start for Santa. Look at all the stores that are involved. Yeah, and we have some really. I mean, one of the things that I think is really cool that's happening on both sides in terms of. I, I almost feel like there's a, a retail resurgence. A lot of people say, you know, oh, Queen Street or Ashman Street or Port Ports Avenue, they're all struggling or there's empty stores vacancies but there are so many people trying new things right now Justin I'm telling you it is it's the niche stores it's those smaller yes. stores and and a lot of these young entrepreneurs we, too are you getting that in Sioux Michigan we, that young we people are, are coming back we are. Is, I yeah. actually just on a, um, just today uh, one of our uh, new shops is called after all this time and she uh, she just started doing um, it's like she's wholesaling a lot of people are wholesaling all over the country right um, so shipping out of their stores using their using their shops is not just waiting for a customer to come in but also doing online sales online also sales doing services we a have place another to maintain their inventory another, right, right oh another brand new shop uh, at stop one the little gift shop just opened and she's uh, she's doing uh, you know really cool retail gifts gifts but also Great, like uh, what is it called? Uh, paint and sip classes, and you know all those types of. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have like that paint yeah. and stuff here. Yeah. Uh, what's this contest stuff? You got a contest? contest going on. Yes. So it, this is this is what you pick up at any store on the list. So pretty much Saturday, if anybody comes over from the Canadian side, yeah. Any store on the list will have a pile of these. You grab one, and if you buy, uh, if you make a purchase of five dollars at 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 uh, one of the stores, they'll sign. And after you get six signatures. You get a chance to win a gift basket worth three hundred dollars. So really Whoa. cool, really nice. cool. Nice. Um, so, and we can get more information on this. Uh, there's a poster right here: www.downtownsue.org. Or yes. on your Facebook page is how I found you too. So there's way more information there. Tell me now. Restaurant week's coming up right yes, after this right is over. After, you yep. launch into restaurant week. Yeah, that's a, an emerging event. I would say we. I think. The Canadian side, you guys have huge amounts of uh, oh, uh, great restaurants that are fine dining establishments. Mm -hmm. On the Michigan side, we hear a lot of, you know, it's a, a lot of people that say, well, I have to go out of time to get that fine dining. So we really wanted to start an event that featured our local restaurants and gave, 
came up with special menus that could really feature our, our local chefs. No kidding. And, uh, and their skills. So we have seven restaurants. Seven participating restaurants. Seven days. You could hit one a night if you wanted. Right on. And each one has... But they're doing lunches too, so yes, you can they do are. two yes. a day. Yep. So the, the idea is a set price. Lunch is $12. Uh, dinner's we say, we say 22 Prefix. Pref- yes, yeah. exactly. $12 for lunch. Yeah. Come on, that's amazing. 22 for dinner. Those are great prices, Justin. Well, and the thing is, I mean, w- on our side... We, we definitely like to have uh, you know affordable lunch options. It's sometimes a little bit more than maybe what people would spend, but you're getting two or three times as much food. Uh, Excuse me, I go to McDonald's <laughs> I know, it is and it's ten dollars <laughs> for yes, a right. McDonald's. You want to give me a lunch in a restaurant for twelve bucks? I'm all over that. Yeah. So and the dinners for twenty two dollars, you're getting a three course dinner. Come on. With um, you know a, 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 a salad or entree. Um, multiple entree options. I saw. I mean, like for example, the Ramado Jibway is doing oysters Rockefeller, I think, no, and and um, it goes into hungry, uh, almond encrusted walleye. I believe just a lot See, of crazy walleye, which we call pickerel. Oh yes, there we That's go. That's okay. Yeah, pickerel. Uh, some of these names will be familiar to people. Uh, the Palace, of course. Freighter's Restaurant, yes, absolutely. Maloney's Alley. Someone hadn't heard of Flanagan's Goat. Yeah, Brent. That, I think they opened about a year and a half ago. Um, the Wicked Sister, Wicked Carl's Sister, Cuisine. Yeah. This is phenomenal. Yes. And once again, for more information, there's an actual website yeah, for this. You can go, you can go to SueRestaurantWeek.com, right. and that you can actually register for a chance to win. If you pre-register and then take a picture of yourself eating at one of the spots, <laughs> you can win a $25 gift certificate to come back uh, and eat again. And you can the also view the menus. They're available yes, for yep. viewing at that website. Yes. Um, I hope you'll come back over to our side. Hey, I, I really appreciate it. This it's is awesome. great fun, and I love to. I mean, it's it's great that we can. So many more alternatives when you shop on both sides. Yeah. You know. Do you mind really quickly if I just thank our go, sponsors? You go ahead. So Justin, I just wanted to say for Restaurant Week especially, uh, C.S. Mulder Funeral Home, really great um, uh, local business, Smith and Company Real Estate, Gordon Food Service. They sup- they they provide GFS, a lot of yeah. our, uh, our our sponsorship for Restaurant Week, and then for our horse drawn carriage rides, Cooper Dental which is a, a great dentist office over there. They're sponsoring our horse-drawn carriage rides. Isn't that so, great to have community partners yes, like that huge, who kick in and help huge out? Huge help to make these happen. So, Once again, thanks for hey, coming across. Been. Pleasure having you on. Best of luck with this. Happy holidays. We'll, we'll and, see you on Saturday. Uh, now we know where to go to shop and dine, right across the bridge, ladies and gentlemen, and stop in. Do you have a place over there that people can stop in and say, hey, I saw you on TV? Well, our office is 511 Ashman Street, Huntington Bank Building, and you can you can find all of our information at downtownsue.org. Go visit, go visit Justin Nell over there, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. On. And we'll be back with more Mornings with Luann and Tim right after this. Welcome back to the Friday morning edition of Mornings with Luann and Tim. Ariana Grande, huge Ponytail. honor. Huge, huge honor <laughs> last night. I remember. Night. Whenever you say Ariana Grande, I remember you telling me that she had this famous ponytail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She actually wears her hair down once a year. What was her honor? Uh, she is Billboard's Woman of the Year. Ooh. Yeah, so that she's 25 years old. Is that about record sales? For Billboard or what was her moment of the so. year? Probably record yeah. sales, I would imagine. Um, and she was very tearful in her acceptance speech because oh. she broke up with her fiancé, as you probably know, because I know you want to know, they, and he, we're here to tell you. Um, so she was very um, emotional about it, and Patti LaBelle yes. presented her with oh, the award. Imagine I that. I love me some Patti LaBelle. Ariana Grande and Patti LaBelle. Oof. Patti LaBelle the, can sing. Man, she can sing, and Ariana Grande can sing. Yes, she can. That's yeah. true. I'm not. I. I. I think she's a bit of a diva, though. It's hard to work with. You mean? Like yes. Kind of yeah, I've. I've read some stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying. There was one security guard. There was a picture of him carrying her from the stage because she was too exhausted to get to her dressing room <laughs> I've after had, the concert. I've had to do that with Luann sometimes after the news. It's exhausting working. <laughs> With <laughs> Tim. So Ariana Bra- Bra- yeah. Grande, she broke up with that guy who was all over yes. the blonde guy, right? Yes, and then... With the big baggy eyes. Just prior okay. to that, yeah. Just prior to that, her former boyfriend um, 
uh, passed away from an accidental overdose. So that was sad. Oh, that's so she's awful. Had, she said, you know, she's had this amazing year. Thank you so much. And professionally and then on a personal level, right? So mm. she wanted to reassure anybody that's having some trouble in their life that she's she gets it. There's she Even though she's Ariana Grande, she has trouble in her life. There's this guy, Adrian Pierce, and he lives in Edmonton. He broke up with his girlfriend 48 years ago. They were set, they were grade 12 students in Toronto when they were 17 years old and it was getting close to Christmas and she gave and she her 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 name was Vicky Allen and she dumped Adrian Pierce just at be, Christmas just before Christmas nice Vicky mm -hmm. but then she gave him her Christmas present because she'd already bought it so she's like here Merry Christmas we're, we're done he got home at 17 years old 48 years ago he got home he was so upset he threw the present under a tree and said I will never open that present 48 years later he still has the present I guess his parents would put it under the tree hoping he'd open it then he kept it put it under his tree with his family his wife finally got stop that is present is no longer welcome under our tree this is enough and but the kids teased him and stuff and it got put back under again one year he tried to open it a little bit he was trying to wait till he was 50 years old to open the present but then he talked about it online or something and it became this viral thing so guess what his ex-girlfriend, Vicki Allen, and he are going to reunite and they're going to open the present together at Christmas after 48 years. I hope it's not a fruitcake. <laughs> it's got a reek by no, now. No, you know what? Those fruitcakes can last. They'll be around with the cockroaches after the, after <laughs> you know the what? nuclear right. war. Yeah. I but, wonder what it'll be. Let us know what it is. I don't really This care. is your assignment. So, okay. We're going to come back with the news after this break, so don't go anywhere. And following that, we have an interview with some folks from St. Mary's College about their Penny from Heaven campaign. So stay with us on Mornings with Lou and Tim. <laughs> So happy to be joined this morning by Alexa and Mr. Zop. May I call you Christopher? You may. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> I've known Christopher for a number of years, and I'm friends with your brother as well. And Alexa, you and I just met, but I'm really mm -hmm. impressed by you, grade 12 Thank student. You. And we actually have you listed on the credits as awesome grade 12 student. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Alexa is actually a, a committee member for the Heaven Sent mm. campaign, sent with a C. <laughs> uh, and you have an event coming up called Penne from Heaven, mm -hmm. which is a really clever spin on a campaign that was started Mr. Zop will tell us, how many years ago did Pennies from Heaven start, Chris? Pennies from Heaven started and originated actually the late Bob Denham, a uh, teacher Bob at uh, St. Mary's College. Did he ever teach you? He did. He taught me grade 9 English. He taught me grade 11 English. Yeah. He was an amazing teacher. Amazing. His wife, Pat, the late Pat Denham, taught me grade 2, so I had both Denhams teaching me. Very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Bob started this whole thing. Bob started the Heaven Sand campaign and back in the day, walking through the halls of St. Mary's College, uh, he noticed there were pennies on the floor and some students were bypassing him and he thought, you know, he stopped the one of the students says, you know, there's pennies on the floor. And the student said, but they're worthless. And he said, but if you gather together, many make a great impact. Yes. So he started picking up and so he challenged uh, the staff at first. I uh, you know, had no idea that was how yeah, it started. Picking up, picking up the pennies mm -hmm. and he started it actually, there was a, a song, uh, Raining uh, yeah. Pennies from Every Heaven. Every time it rains, it rains, it rains. So pennies <laughs> from heaven. Just cue me. Yeah. And so that's, and it started that way where we just uh, collected uh, funds, uh, weekly funds, we were okay. to weekly missions and then it started to grow and then they started doing fundraisers and so then the name was in the late, and probably mid 90s they named it the heavens uh, sorry the pennies from heaven campaign yes and so from there pennies from heaven have taken off and they've had uh, several events so the fundraisers so the students got involved yes mm -hmm. and boy did it ever take off over the last how many years about eight years since 2010 did you say or no sorry what uh, was? it started in the 90 in the early 90s oh in the early 90s so it's been um well 20 years 20 years approximately 20 years and the grand total raised thus far through pennies pennies from heaven because we had to change it since yes. it's no longer pennies yeah. but uh, pennies just over 350,000 350,000 <laughs> in pennies what must that have looked what was the biggest year do you know the biggest year the biggest intake the largest year was the early 2000s uh it was just over 24,000 
that they raised, and they were br and they were bringing him out. <laughs> uh, literally, it took a, a crew of individuals, uh, staff, students, and it was a train, and they carried boxes of pennies because they were rolled. Rolling. Students rolled them. Uh, they spent time before school, at lunch, after school, rolling pennies. Luann remembers Luann when you were talking in the green room, and Luann yes. said she remembers covering a story on that, and they were they had footage of the students was, sitting there and rolling these pennies for hours. They were. <laughs> <laughs> and then you smell like yeah. popper. Wow. And I was before, Don't lick your fingers yeah. after. And that was before <laughs> they had the plastic containers. Oh, so they would the count. So they have to count and then they have oh the paper roll. Oh my roll. gosh. Mm -hmm. So then now, okay, we all know that the, the Canadian Mint has discontinued the making of pennies. So who came up with this idea? Penny from heaven. Is this the first year for penny from heaven? Um, no. No? No. Penny from heaven has been one of the fundraisers that we've had since the inception. Ah, oh, yeah. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. See, okay, my bad. Sorry, didn't know that. It was. I thought it was sort of brand new since Pennies is no longer, but it's always been around. Yeah, it was just a spin-off of one of the events. Okay, mm -hmm. so do you want to tell us the concept of what goes on with Penny from Heaven? Yeah, so when St. Basil's and St. Mary's came together, we became a AAA school because of the amount of students. AAA being the ranking of the number, by yeah. ranked by the student population. Yeah, so over a thousand would be the AAA school. Okay. So we thought that the triple A's should stand for something that we want to achieve during our Heaven Sent campaign. Okay. So the triple A's stand for Adoption, Alms, and Action. Adoption, Alms, and, and Action. action. Mm -hmm. Let's start with Adoption. So Adoption, a class would adopt a family who wouldn't receive gifts at Christmas. Come on, that's so nice. <laughs> and they would purchase gifts for the family who would then receive them on our celebration of giving. So the family actually comes to the school and they mm -hmm. get the... <gasps> that must be emotional. Yeah, it is. Wow. Okay, so that's adoption. adoption. And so, um, how do the families find out if they've been adopted, or do they, do the families reach out to the to the school and say we could use some help? We or? we send a, an email out to the uh, principals and our family counselors and <gasps> throughout our system, and we ask, can you forward a name? Okay. Uh, or, or a family, and with specifics, we don't necessarily ask for the names. Um, and then, uh, depending on the relationship that the family has with that home school, the principal, uh, they would sometimes they will they will in attendance. If not, the mm -hmm. the counselors are on their behalf and, and deliver and deliver them. to them to their wow. home. Wow! So. so that's the adoption aspect. Yeah. The second A, alms. Alms is everyone gets involved in alms. It's the students and the staff collectively. It's when we do all of our activities for Heaven Sent. So our hockey, soccer games, our basketball games, our Penny from Heaven, uh -huh. and our talent shows, and all of those activities. So the admission cost to the games. Mm -hmm. The admission cost to the games, and to participate in the games, the groups have <gasps> oh, to Oh, that's pay. right. I, you were mm -hmm. telling me that they actually, you do things like a, at a basketball game, you yeah. might get to take a shot, and if mm -hmm. you get the shot and you win a prize. You win a prize, yeah. Okay. So you pay to get in, and then you can also pay to participate in these activities. In the activities, yeah. And all of that money goes to? Towards Heaven Sent. Towards Heaven mm -hmm. Sent. Uh, the admission for the talent show, same yep. thing. All goes to Heaven mm -hmm. Sent. How brilliant is that? So, um, and then also, you were talking about the fun, was it a student pass? Is it a Heaven Sent pass? The Heaven Sent pass, yeah. Tell me about that. So, we have a Heaven Sent pass that costs $10, and that is you can get into all, well, most of the games, the basketball and soccer games. Okay. And it also includes the dress down days that we have. Gives you permission to dress down. Mm -hmm. You don't so, have to contribute every time. Right? Yeah, if you buy the pass, it's only half of what you would be paying if you didn't buy the pass. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. and, it all, and once again, all the funds go to Heaven's Heaven Campaign. Mm -hmm. So that, we've got adoption, we've got alms, alms, and the last one is action. action. We kicked off action with our annual Stuff a Bus campaign this year. Okay. Where every student had to donate a gift, new or gently used toys, toiletries, hats, mitts, gloves, and we would all collectively put them under a Christmas tree. <gasps> down and in the common area? Down in the common area. <gasps> and this year... It looked amazing. It did, yeah. And this year... Our goal was one gift for every student in the school. And you surpassed that, didn't you? We did, yes. But you said by the end they were just carrying out Yeah, so we, we started with one gift per student, and then by the end we had so much left over we had to give them piles of stuff to put on the bus. <sighs> I love these stories about our youth, you guys. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, and thank you for being a... a, a a support, a mentor. This really is youth engagement, isn't it? It is. Mr. Zop. The, the kids take on so much of this responsibility in it, running the campaign. The, the Heaven Sent campaign is completely run by the students. We have the teacher mentors. Mentors. Uh, and they just pretty much are calling the meetings to organize, but the, the ideas, the action part of it, the carry out is all student driven. Wow. And, and it's the idea of giving back to the community. And this so. year, talk about student driven, they're actually cooking. 
They will be. <laughs> there, so this year, tell me about the, the program that, that is offered at St. Mary's College. I love that you're doing uh, offering these trade programs at St. Mary's. Tell we, me about we that. We have a high schools major, uh, hotel and uh, tourism and hospitality course. Yeah. And so uh, as part of the Heaven Sent and the Pan A from Heaven activity that <laughs> we're doing, our fundraiser, uh, we had uh, a guest come in, a local um, owner of a restaurant. You can say. Uh, so uh, Mrs. Calvano from Uncle Gino's uh, was in and uh, she, Mama did, Calvano. she <laughs> did a little tutorial uh, for meatballs. And so the high school's major class has already uh, rolled the meatballs, prepared, rolled, cooked, and they're ready to go. Uh, and so they'll the be making... The class made nine? 900, just, just shy of 900 meatballs. <laughs> So if they're not rolling pennies, they're the, rolling meatballs. That's right. so, and the idea is, and hopefully that uh, we'll be able to uh, disperse all those through uh, all those tickets being sold for Penny from Heaven. And it's, that's going to be happening on Tuesday. We've got the poster up right now. Tuesday, so December ahead, the 11th. Tuesday, December the 11th. The 11th. That is, oh, that's next Tuesday. That's next Tuesday. Okay. And so it's between 4.30 and 6.30. Do we need to register in advance, Mr. Zahn? It would be great if they called the school or if they dropped into the school and said, you know, I'd like to purchase tickets. Tickets okay. are only $20. Okay. And so they're really receiving a generous portion of uh, pasta, two meatballs, uh, salad, salad and bread. And bread. Yeah. Is the bread homemade? Uh, well, it's local. <laughs> Locally made bread. That's okay. Yeah. That's, that works we're, for me. We're doing local. So they literally just pull into the bus bay. Yes, and we will have students greeting them. The and angels. we'll be doing curbside delivery. Curbside delivery. You're gonna, they're going to come out with your fresh penne, yep. your I'll beautiful meatballs, salad and bread, $20, goes to the charity. Exactly. Present and all things. that money stays local. All the mm -hmm. money stays local. Uh, and uh, so the other thing I want to talk about was the angels you're going to have lined up in the, in the tell me about that. In the mornings, uh, we have uh, between 8.15 and 8.30, we have our Heaven Sent Angels. They're collecting donations. So if, a, if someone wants to make a uh, generous donation or just even a small handful of change, whatever they have, right. pull into the into the student parent drop off area and you can't miss them because they got their angel wings and halos angel on it. And, and, and then white you also outfit. said you were short of a few costumes, but they found all the choir gowns they from did. St. Basil's. They did. <laughs> and, they're and we're using them, we're recycling them. Oh, sorry, the date again for the for the um, picking dropping off the money to the angels. That's Monday, it's, uh, Tuesday through Fridays, eight fifteen to eight thirty. So Owen, when you're dropping morning. off your kids, stop by, That's shave true. up your change. I can't thank you, Alexa. Really nice thank to meet you. you. And once again, I'm so impressed. Every time I get students on from both boards and they talk about the activities in the schools, it's it's so heartwarming. We're in good, we're in good hands. And you know what? The school's in good hands with you, Mr. Zopp, Vice Principal at St. Mary's College. And thank you very much. I am an alumni of St. Mary's College, and I received this as a gift today. And uh, the theme this year, Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord. Is that right? Preparing the Way of the Lord, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, St. Mary's College, Pen A from heaven. Get involved and uh, contact the school to order your Pen A meatballs, salad, and bread. <laughs> Happy holidays! Merry Christmas! Merry Thank you. Christmas! And uh, we'll be back with Lou Ann. No, actually, we're going to come back with pets. Ooh, the Humane Society comes on Fridays. Ooh. I love it. <laughs> okay, we'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. We have a dog. I love dogs. I mean, I like cats, but I f love dogs. I said this morning, I was like, I haven't brought a dog in a while. It's about time. Laura from the Humane Society. It's Fur and Feathers Friday. Not feline today. It's fluffy. What are you looking at? He's scary. <laughs> what are you tree? staring at? The what? tree? You're funny. I love this little collar. Yes. This is? Remy. Okay. Remy is only <laughs> eight <laughs> months old. Yes. A purebred Cocker Spaniel. Yes. These are beautiful. I mean, how much money would a purebred Cocker Spaniel cost somebody to buy? With papers? Probably close to a couple A couple, couple grand? Yeah. Without wow. papers, five. 500 anyway. Plus. Now, Remy's a pretty special little guy. Yes, he is. He's got a couple of little issues, but they're being taken care of. He's yes. eight months old. He is. He came to us already neutered. Already neutered? But he has cherry eye. Cherry eye? Yes. It's the inner eyelid. Yeah. There is inflamed and it sticks out. It starts so underneath it starts you can see it. Yeah. It's just like popping a little bit underneath but 
this treatment happened. Yes, uh, he'd had the surgery twice already, but it didn't take. Oh. So he that's when because he had a bit of an ear infection. He had a bad ear infection, yes, because the big He's, floppy ears. Yeah, you got to be careful with these dogs. Yeah. basset hounds, you, cocker spaniels, even your golden retrievers, anything with like the big droopy the big, ears. Droopy ears. You got to keep on top of them. Got to keep, keep them clean, clean right? Yeah. So you you've done antibiotics. What have you done for the ears? Uh, the ears. He had cleaning? two special treatments where he actually had to go and one he had to get like sedated and. The they scrape and um. get that infection out of there and pack antibiotics right deep in the inner ear canal because it was his head shaking that was causing the uh, cherry eye the surgeries not to take so it was oh he was shaking his head because of his ears yes and the surgery didn't take right so but now we're getting the ear situation all taken yep, care of he had his of. last ear treatment yesterday and he was a good boy okay last you're gonna get your ears are gonna be all better yeah and then in a little less than two weeks he goes ears in for <laughs> gorgeous in about two weeks, he goes in for the eye surgery. Eye surgery, and this time it should work. It should. Look at his beautiful teeth, because he's so young, eh? He is, yeah. Eight months old. And he's That's such old. a good boy. And already neutered. So what, Tom, when he's ready in a couple of weeks, it'll be how long before he's ready to go after two weeks? I figure about two, maybe three weeks maybe before. Maybe three after the surgery, yeah, right? but he'll be on the adoption floor after the surgery, the day after the surgery. I have a feeling someone's going to be running in there to adopt this fellow. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's You're, going to the Greyhound game Sunday, too. What do you mean, to be so he can be seen? <laughs> yeah. He gets to ride around in the Prost Motors truck. <laughs> oh, and look at these. Can we show? Huge. Look at his paw. <laughs> Garrett, can you get the size of this paw? It's it's as it's as big as my hand. Yeah. But they, how much, but he's like not going to get bigger as no, far as. he's full grown. Now, he has been eating a little much. Yes. So we're going to have to put him on a diet too. Diet and some <clears throat> exercise. Well, a yard <laughs> will be great. Yes. And he's only a puppy. He needs to run. So he does, yeah, he does. Garrett, <laughs> are you taking pictures of this dog because you want to adopt him? <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't do well just tied because uh, he can chew through these. So okay. he, he needs a fenced yard where he can run or, or an active family. Okay. That will... Get and as always, we know you're open on the weekends, noon, noon to, five. to five. So, and I don't think you're going to be around long, buddy, because uh, at eight months old and this beautiful, and he's like so well behaved. Oh, he's just yeah, he's amazing. He just like guy. attention. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. He had oh, the kisses. Oh, I love the kisses. He had responsible owners, and I mean, they knew that it's just at, after two oh, wait, surgeries are we, are we they couldn't yeah, do anymore. Luan, Luan doesn't like dogs. I can't believe she joined in. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get a countdown. I didn't know I was out of no, time. No, that's okay. It's all good. What are we? How much time do we have to say goodbye? Thirty we're, seconds. We're thirty seconds, <laughs> Laura. We'll see you next Friday. I probably will never see you again because someone's going to adopt yes. you. <laughs> I no. hope so. He's so cute. And I'll see you on Monday. Yes, you'll see me on Monday. Have an awesome weekend. Try not to work too hard. I won't. And, and try not to fall under the tree. Okay, I'll do my best. you're decorating. Good Thanks. to see you, Laura. Good Thanks. To see Thanks you. for watching. We'll see Bye. you Monday.